All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, solo playthrough of Founders of Gloomhaven. It's not going to be like a full playthrough. I'm probably just going to like play through a couple rounds uh, just to give you an idea of how it goes. I mean, my my setup is is not great. I don't really want to subject you to too long, but I just want to give you a basic idea um, before Roland Solo gets a uh, hold of his copy and is able to make a much nicer looking solo playthrough. So this is just the stopgap video for lack of a better term. All right, so what are we doing here? Um, I'm going to be playing as the orchids. Oh, I guess the other thing I should mention is that this copy is obviously very much prototype. All my nice prototypes are, uh, you know, off somewhere else. And so this is the prototype that I have. It's uh, just, just bear with it. You know, we're using like um, some Galaxy Trucker space box and a Carcassonne scoring board. And uh, yeah, it's great. You know, just, just go with it. Um, and this very nice uh, Chessex battle mat for the map. This is actually really nice. Um, like seriously, like this isn't a commercial for Chessex or anything, but I basically use this for like all my prototyping and it's, it's great. Like combined with a set of uh, non-permanent markers, like it's how I make, you know, boards for every single prototype that I do, including this is originally what the first Gloomhaven map was drawn on. Both the overworld map and the first like scenario map. Anyway, I'm getting off track. All right, so with that out of the way, I'm gonna be playing as the orchids. Um, and so, I mean, the thing to your right is I, I control gems, which doesn't mean much uh, because in a solo game, you control all resources. Um, but this gems means that I start with gems on the board as normal. Right, so whatever my racial resource is, that's what I get. Uh, the main benefit of the race is, you know, the special action, um, which in the case of the Orchids is if I place a worker here, I can basically recruit an advisor for free. <clears throat> and also I'm going to be playing on the left side of the board. Uh, in a solo game, you're, pro you're not going to go over the whole board. Um, basically more or less like half of it because it's all very much all about just efficiency and doing things as efficiently as possible so you're gonna get everything you need out probably on half the board and uh, both the orchid race and starting on the left side of the board are considered like easy mode um, so just to give you an idea of, of what's going on um, because recruiting advisors is very powerful in the solo game <clears throat> all right so uh, do I need to say anything else up front? So this is the advisor offer, and then these are the buildings that uh, are available to be built. Um, you'll notice that there are some um, influence tokens uh, on the circle and the square of this board. Um, so basically what's going to happen is I'm going to play through my four cards. And once I play through my four cards, one of these buildings is going to get built. I, I get to choose where it goes, um, but I also have some control over which one gets built. So uh, if I don't do anything, like if I don't pay anything, then the North Gate House is gonna be built. And that was actually like a pretty terrible draw for me because the North Gate House, obviously I don't get to decide where that goes. That goes in the upper corner and that's gonna be a pain because I'm starting over here. Um, so I really don't want that to get built, at least not right away, maybe not ever. Um, <laughs> Uh, so the second building is a Temple of the Great Oak, and if I want to build that building, uh, when it comes time to one of these getting built, I have to pay the influence below it, which starts at, at two fleeting influence, so basically two influence. And then if I want to build the Archer's Garrison, I'm going to have to pay two lasting influence, which essentially is four influence. So it's, that's sort of like the automation of, of any sort of like bidding mechanic that's going to come up. Um, at least that's how it plays out. So let's look at these buildings. Obviously, as I've explained, like North Gatehouse is pretty bad. Uh, and the main reason for that is that the way these buildings work is once they go out on the board, and let's take this, because this is really what I'm eyeing, is like which one I want to get built. Once these go out on the board, as soon as they go out on the board, you're going to place uh, one of these, I just, I'm just using these black tokens, um, just place a black token on them. 
And then during the next round of playing through my cards, I have to deliver at least one resource to that building. If I deliver a resource to this building, I get to remove this black marker and everything's fine. If I don't deliver a resource and that black marker stays on, uh, when it comes time to the next vote, uh, before we get to re even resolve that, I have to look and see, okay, I have a black marker on this. Anything that has a black marker, I have to pay this cost. So I have to pay two lasting influence or any, any total of four influence to remove this black marker before we can get to the next vote. If I don't remove, if I don't have enough influence to remove any black markers out on the board, I lose. So it's very important to pick a building that uh, you're going to be able to deliver resources to constantly um, over the course of a few rounds um, so that you can always remove that black marker. Now, once it's complete, once I've delivered all four of these resources, then we no longer put black markers on it. But once a resource, as soon as a building is complete, has all the resources delivered, um, we increase this cost. So as soon as that happens for any building, we're going to place another uh, lasting influence on this space and another fleeting influence on this space. So essentially, uh, any building I complete then makes it more expensive uh, in the future. So there's very much like a, a timing mechanic to this, or not a mechanic, but just a, a timing feel. You gotta make sure you do this right. So uh, Temple of the Great Oak is definitely one of mine because this is great. This is like the first time I have to deliver this, I'll, it's just a basic resource. I just gotta get wood out on the board within the first two rounds, which is pretty easy. And then the next two uh, deliveries are also pretty easy. It's just food and gems, which are like the two easiest tier two resources to create. And then it's not until the fifth round of the game out of seven total that I'm gonna have to deliver a tier three resource to it. Or at some point I can delay that by paying um, an influence cost. But that's really um, a great building to get out at the beginning of the game because it gives you a lot of choice. Now, for instance, uh, in contrast, this Archer's Garrison, which starts off easy, like you just need to deliver stone, but then after you deliver stone to it, uh, you, these are both tier three resources. So that means like on the third round, you're gonna have to get a tier three resource out, which is kind of difficult. <clears throat> so we're gonna go for the Temple of the Great Oak, I think, once it gets time to voting. Now that means I'm gonna have to have two influence, which I'll have to get at some point. Uh, during the course of playing these four cards. Probably the easiest way to do that would be just to recruit somebody because uh, recruiting will get you the lasting influence and the fleeting influence just like in uh, the normal game. Um, and what are the things to think about? Now obviously I can't use my racial power which is very strong until I get workers on, or yeah, workers, which I do by building out houses. And houses also give you that benefit of giving you an extra influence every round uh, to make uh, you know the costs of these buildings uh, easier to manage. So um, there's that, and then there's also a consideration of just getting out as many resources as I can because, like in the basic game, or you know in the normal game, every different resource I have out on the board increases my income, which happens you know after the vote or before the vote actually. Um, Right, and I control all eight basic resources. So if I get all eight basic resources out on the board, you know, that's eight money that I'm making every round. Now, of course, you're limited. I've only got these four cards, and only one of them lets me place out a new resource. Um, so I think we might as well start with that. <clears throat> so I'm going to play this trade card, um, which uh, hopefully, you know, you're familiar with the, the basic mechanics of the game. I'm going to play this trade card. I'm going to pay one dollar, and I'm going to put a new resource out onto the board. Now, um, which resource do I want to put out on the board? I think, considering that, I mean, I don't need to get wood out until the next round, and I am somewhat limited in, in my upgrades, or bo bo both my trade and my upgrade. I think it either makes sense to either just put out wood, wood on, on the board now, or uh, maybe crops so that I can get food out on the board, which is an easy tier two resource I can put out on the board to increase my income. Uh, so I, th I think we're gonna start with that. I think I'm gonna pay $1, one space buck, to uh, place uh, crops out on the board. Now, uh, where does this need to go? 
Now, obviously, I want everything connected. And I'm sorry if it's sort of hard to see this map, but you know, you've got like red spaces right here, and this is the white area, and then this is the river, and then the coastal areas and some forests and whatnot. Uh, I'm going to put this in this red area right here. And that cost me $1, and then it's going to increase my income by one. So that was great. Um, oh, actually, now that I think about that, the other important thing here, obviously, is the advisors out on the board. Maybe I should rethink that, because I don't really need to get out that crops right away. If instead, let's say I got uh, metal out on the board right away, I could, I could recruit this haggler, um, which would then actually let me get out something else on the board for free. Now that I think about it, that's a much better idea. This Haggler is pretty much uh, the best card you can see coming out early. Let's do that instead. So I pay $1, I get Metal out on the board. And then that will allow me to then play my Recruit. Um, so I get a Fleeting Influence, and then I'm going to Recruit the Haggler. Uh, it's going to cost one dollar, but I'm going to get a lasting influence as well. So I pay another dollar to get the haggler. And now this goes into my hand like normal. Um, but the difference with advisors, and then after I recruit, all these guys move down. So that's, let me see what comes up next, which is the population guy. Okay, so um, what's important about these advisors, right? So this is an advisor card. And... Um, you can always do like the basic follow actions if you want. Like, so if you don't really need to construct, say on this round, like you, you don't really have the money or you don't think it's advantageous to you at this point to get a worker out on the board. Um, you don't need to build a house for whatever reason. Anyway, you can always just play these face down to get, you know, an influence or build a road or uh, collect the money. And that's really the main way that you're going to be building roads. Um, is by playing cards face down. Now, if you take well, an advisor card and you play it face down, you just get your basic follow action. And obviously, um, that's also how you're going to use like your racial actions. Um, and what, but what happens if, if it's an advisor card, you play it face down and it just goes in your discard pile. If you play an advisor face up though, for its main power, you actually lose the card. Like it, you remove it from the game. Um, so basically recruiting advisors is a sort of another way to increase your income. Like if you just take the advisors and hoard them and just anytime you play an advisor, you just play it face down for just some basic income, either, you know, the road, the influence or the money. Um, and so you really only want to play your advisors when it's really going to be a benefit to you to do so. Um, which I think at the beginning of the game with the haggler, it is now in our best interest to just play this because we can basically get another basic resource out on the board for free, which is going to increase our income anyway, and it's going to you know increase our engine out on the board. Um, so I think we are going to play this haggler next um, and just remove it from the game to then, well, so then the question is who do we want to get out next? We can get out wood, which will allow us access to the carpenter, or we could go with the original plan of food. Um, Hmm. Uh, let's get the wood out so we have more options for uh, recruiting in the future. And let's put it there. And remember that was free and that increased our income again, which is great, but you know, obviously now we have fewer options uh, for cards. What I'd really like to do so now I've got two cards left, like the round's almost over. My, my basic options here would either be to use my upgrade, uh, to, well, to use my construct, oh no, yeah, just use my upgrade to build a road and build a tier two resource. Um, so I could build, like for instance, gem or jewelry out on the board, which is gonna increase my income by one, which is nice. Uh, my other option is I could, no, I couldn't really do that. I was thinking I could, use this for a road, and then construct a house, which I think it's gonna be really important to get at least one house as early as possible so I can start using my orchid action, which is just great. Gets more advisors, which is more cards, which is more stuff I can do, or just more basic um, income that I can get. 
Um, but I wouldn't be able to play that now because if I built that house, then I wouldn't have any cards left to uh, actually take advantage of that power. Unless I kept the Haggler in my hand and used it face down, maybe just... Actually, yeah, I'm gonna take, sorry, I'm gonna take that back. I'm not gonna use this Haggler. Because I think that's a better option, to getting a house out as soon as possible um, so I can start using this power, like I can use that power immediately. Um, so yeah, we're gonna play the Haggler face down, which means it goes in my discard just to build a road. And these are my roads, so sorry that they're not like tiles or anything. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to put this road right there, and then I'm going to use the construct action. So I pay $3, and that's also going to give me the added benefit of getting another fleeting influence at the end of the round. Um, and then I can use that fleeting influence plus this fleeting influence to build the Temple of the Great Oak, and that means I can hold on to this lasting influence, which is very important um, for later in the game. All right, so I'm going to build a house, and that's going to give me access to a worker. I'm going to put it right there. Yeah, it costs three because of the construct action. That goes in my discard. Then I'm going to play this upgrade face down uh, to use this worker on my orchid power, which is off the board. And I'm going to take uh, a showman, right, which is the gem that I have out on the board. Yeah, it's the only thing I can take, actually. <laughs> so uh, we're going to do that. And let's see. I can now use. So now I've got another card in my hand which is great. I can now use that to put another resource out on the board, um, which uh, isn't as great because the power is I would get fleeting influence, but just like before, or you know, just like the normal game, any fleeting influence gets lost after the vote. So this would give me a, a basically a third fleeting influence, which would be, which would just be wasted. So the power of this like doesn't actually benefit me a whole lot. Um, and I'm only getting two income. Obviously, if I if I got another resource out of the board, I'd get a third income. Um, but I think in order to save this power, I think what I'm going to do is just play it face down and get a dollar. <clears throat> All right, so that is that. So, I don't have any cards. Now we're gonna do the votes. As I talked about before, I wanna get the Temple of the Great Oak out. So, uh, sorry, first I'm gonna collect income. So I get $2 because I got two resources out on the board and then I got a uh, fleeting influence uh, for my house. All right, then after we collect income, then we're gonna vote. I'm gonna spend this two fleeting influence to make sure the Temple of the Great Oak goes out instead of that awful North Gate house. So we're gonna take this uh, really, we just want to put this as out of the way as possible, but also connect. I mean, obviously, we want to connect to it eventually, but I think I'm going to put it right here on the board. Uh, all right, so we're going to do that. We got to put the black marker on it, and then, as always, you know, this card is now available to place workers on, um, and though that will be useful. Generally, your racial action is going to be more useful. Um, but once I get a second house, which is going to require me to build a bridge or something and then get out elsewhere, I can start using the prestige buildings as well. Now, these other two prestige buildings um, <clears throat> don't get removed, which is kind of bad news for me. Like eventually that North Gate house is probably going to have to be built. What happens is they just slide down, right? So the ones that I didn't like now become the cheapest ones. And if I want to continue to build stuff that's not them, like this Westgate house, which is actually pretty nice because it's in the area that I like. Um, yeah. Oh, wait, no, sorry. Okay, yes, normally in that case, but now there are two gatehouses on the board, so like normal, this one, actually, I guess this is reverse of what it is in the normal game. In the normal game, I think the leftmost one gets discarded, or the rightmost one, but in this version, the leftmost one gets discarded. Yes, the one that just came in. That's going to get put up back on the bottom of the deck and we're going to get a new one, which is Superior Sundries. Oh, which is over here somewhere. It's not that you can see that anyway. And Superior Sundries uh, is also still great. Like, it's, it's just a uh, one basic resource and then two advanced resources. 
<clears throat> that are pretty easy to make. So, uh, but also I think the Archer's Garrison might be manageable at this point as well. So it's probably going to be one of those two. I still don't want to invest in that North Gate House. And as long as I don't complete any of these buildings, these costs aren't going to get any, any more expensive. So like the Archer's Garrison is probably going to be doable for the foreseeable future. Um, or, you know, the, I, you know, what am I saying? That the second column isn't, is, isn't that big of a detriment to build that instead of the first column because the fleeting influence is going to go away anyway. All right, so now I've got six cards in my hand, which is great. But remember that two of these are advisors that if you play them, then they're going to go away. <clears throat> so what is my first course of action here? Um, now, I really should be focused on getting my income up, right? So I've only got $5 now. And I also have to make sure to get that wood out on the board this round and connect it. Well, yeah, now that I think about it, if I really wanted to be lazy, but I, uh, I could put the Temple of the Great Oak there and then I could just like import wood right there. And uh, then I wouldn't even have to worry about building a road. But I think building a road is probably good anyway. But anyway, okay, so I'm gonna start with my trade action, which is not an advisor, so we can just do that. So trade, uh, we're gonna put the wood out on the board. We're gonna put it right there. That's gonna increase our income. And it's going to cost a dollar. All right. Now, I also really like... Ah, the other thing I could do is I could just build jewelry here and then not even worry about connecting that wood right away. Which is actually... Yeah, I like that idea too. So let's just do that next. So next, we're going to do the upgrade action. So I get to build a road and build a resource. Um, so I'm going to put this road right here and then i'm going to build jewelry which there it is sorry uh, right there for four dollars which is all i have left um and that is going to deliver to the temple of the great oak so i can remove this black marker uh, and then we still score points so i score one point for my gems for building this jewelry and then another three points for delivering the jewelry. Ah, oh boy, that was a disaster. There we go, moved it up. <clears throat> All right, and that also increases my income, right? Because I just put out a new resource onto the board. So what is next now that I have no money? Oh, and remember I also get my worker back so I can use, I can play any card face down to get that orchid benefit again, which I do like. Um, I don't have, what do I think here? Let's see. So if I am going to build that Archer's Garrison next, I got to start thinking about, uh, food, like crops and food, which obviously is also important for that, right? Food and then eventually getting up to labor. I guess what I could do is I could build um, population next. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to play the haggler face up. So now I am going to lose this haggler. Yes, okay. We're going to lose that haggler um, to put population out on the board for free. And we're going to put it right there. Remember, you still have to obey all the restrictions about how you can't have anything adjacent to each other which is sort of why I'm creating like this grid of stuff. Um, so that's going to give me another income. All right, so that's done. Now we're going to play the showman face down so I get to keep him uh, for my orchid power so I can recruit this taskmaster for free. Now this taskmaster is, is also great. It allows me to recruit two advisors. I'm probably not going to use him face up right away, though. I might just use him face down for a couple rounds. Oops, that's not my card. Okay, now, <clears throat> I do also want to re recruit that carpenter and get another card. I don't have any money though. That's a problem. All right, so I'm gonna just take this Taskmaster and play it face down to get a dollar. Uh, and then I'm gonna use my recruit action, spend that dollar, 
uh, to recruit this carpenter. All right, so that's going to give me another lasting influence, plus that fleeting influence, which is which is great, like is necessary for when the vote comes, uh, combined with the influence I'm going to get from my house to get the archer's garrison out. All right, so now I've got two construct actions, and I don't have any money, and I don't really want to construct anyway. Uh, oh, you should get moved down. So, uh, you know, I've removed the black token there, so I can safely end the round anyway. Um, getting an income of five, which is nice. I think at this point I just want to get more money. So I'm just going to use both these cards face down uh, to get two more dollars. All right, then at the end of the round, we're going to collect uh, income. And so I got five there, plus another fleeting influence. And then we go to the vote. Now, I don't know, I could just put out superior senders, which would be a lot easier. It would give me a little more breathing room. But uh, we're just going to go with it for now. So we're going to spend the two influence to get the archer's garrison out on the board. Um, and we will just put it, it has to be on green. Yeah, we'll just put it like right there. And, oh, the action of the superior sundries is way much, way better too. Anyway, we'll get it out next round. It's probably, cause we're not gonna get another house out for a while anyway. So, uh, yeah, that's the end of the round. We get a new card out and we get all the cards that we played face down or other ones back. So we recruited like two more people that round. Yeah, so now we've got a hand of seven cards, which is great. Like it's, you really wanna use as few advisors face up as, as possible, just like when they're really necessary. So you can get a bigger hand each round and get more stuff. Uh, but anyway, uh, I think that's gonna be it for, I think two rounds is, is a good amount of rounds to give you an idea of what's going on. Um, and so, so yeah. Uh, thanks for watching.